The producers would like to thank WFWM 91.9 and Frostburg State University for their generous cooperation in the production of this program. This program is made possible by the support of The Toad Hall Foundation. The Darklands is produced by Misfit Toys Industries in Frostburg, Maryland, and is solely responsible for the content of this program. The producers encourage all listeners to support their local public radio station, WFWM 91.9, with financial support. No rebroadcast or transmission of this program is allowed without the written permission of Misfit Toys Industries. This program is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The Dark Lands. Not all the bad men of the Old West were bad men. I set out to kill one of these bad men. Later, people turned into one of them stories of the Old West in some dime store novel. I guess I ought to say my piece on it, too. Lamort found him first. That's how I came to be on his trail. Lamort had him dead to rights, so they say. Or at least, so they figured. As soon as we're all set, I'll go and get him. Remember, your only job here is to keep him from getting out of there. It's a box canyon, so there's no other way out. You sure about this? They say he's never going to be taken alive. Eustace, you have a bad habit of believing the tall tales of the men that are our quarry. Now, I didn't say that. I just think maybe this one is different. Different how? He's a murdering, bushwhacking, four-flusher from hell. The law has over two dozen bounties out on him, and that man ain't nothing but a payday. I want my money. Hell, the mort. I do, too. I just don't want to die getting it. And this one ain't like any of the others. They was all deserters or rustlers or even just crazy killer types. He kills for money. Same as us. Then that means he can die for it, same as us. You signal the boys. I'm going down there. Don't do it, for God's sake. God don't play no part in what I got planned for him. Remember, boys, wait for the flare. That's the signal. Who's here? Lamort? Ain't you even gonna try to run? Or at least put up a fight? I don't want none of those choices. Well, hell, since we got you surrounded, that does have me a mite curious. What does a murdering rogue like yourself want? What would your choice be if and you had your druthers? I would prefer to sit right here, beside my campfire, and eat this rabbit that's fixing to be ready almost any time now. Might even entertain the notion of an old acquaintance. Sitting down to talk things out rather than shooting or fighting. You know I don't eat rabbit. Here you are, supposed to be some bad man now. <laughs> nope. Weak. Same as ever. So they say. But they say you ain't never lost a gunfight yet. That's not what they say. Oh, well, what's the truth then? It's not what they say, it's what I say, because it's true. Oh, you got me quaking in my boots here, Mr. Bad Man. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm trying to warn you. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you'll forgive me if I don't take your warning much to heart with over 30 guns out there in the dark pointing at you. Sure about that? Oh, yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Now, I'm going to get down off this here horse, and you're going to sit there all nice and easy like, and when I get down, we're going to do the old manacle dance. I don't know that one. Like I said, I'm just fine sitting right here. So you do what you want. I do know something you might have overlooked. 
I ain't sure if I'm interested in what you think you know or don't know. Then let me repeat my offer of a conversation and dinner. Because if there's going to be shooting, that fire's going out fast, and them 30 rifles in the dark are just as likely to hit you as me. Seems a shame, knowing you won't win. <laughs> That's what I always liked about you. You just never know when to quit. Well, friend, this is that time. <laughs> I know it seems that way, and... I'm sure you went to great pains to make sure I never leave here breathing. Just be warned, things ain't always what they seem. Oh, you don't scare me none. Now, I said put them bracelets on or I'll put them on your corpse. Last chance. Ain't my last chance, it's yours. You can walk away right now, but if you fire a shot at me in anger, I ain't responsible. Enough talk! Now, you still... Damn you! I can't see. He threw gunpowder in the damn fire! Where are you? Eustace! Eustace! Folks! Folks! You okay? Which way did he go? I don't know. I'm blinded, you idiot. Kill him. Boss, I can't kill him if I can't find him. Where is he? I'm guessing he's that way. Then let's go the other way. No. We'll stay right here. Boss, he's out there. Don't point that at me. Like I said, we're staying right here. Oh, I can't see much, but I can see you. So if and you run, you won't get far between me and him. Boss, killing me don't kill him. No, but he will come to kill you. You're gonna have to fight too. It's kinda like Cortez burning his ships. You're crazy. I didn't come here to die for you. Like I said, you ain't got no choice. You do have a choice. Eustace. Show yourself, you bastard! Eustace can see me plainly enough. Can't you, Eustace? Don't you come near me. I ain't the one pointing a gun at you right now. Maybe. But you've come to kill me, for sure. I don't have to do nothing. That is, as long as you don't. But I want my payday, so... Like I said, I don't have to do nothing now. You keep that pistol right where it is and start walking. Then me and Lamort here can finish our business. How do I know you won't shoot me in the back? If I wanted you shot, you'd have been shot by now. Front, back, up, down the damn sides. Now get. You can't leave me here. If and I don't want to get killed, then I, I think I do. Sorry, boss. Just don't look back. I'll keep my end of the deal. You keep yours. No dealing with the devil. Give me that gun. Boss, stop. <sighs> so, here we are. Back where we started. What are you waiting for? I'm right here. Come on and kill me. Oh, you take one step closer so I can see what I'm aiming at, and I will. Okay. How about now? Can you see me clear enough? Oh, what a shame. Old Eustace only had one round left, too. You should have counted. Or at least asked. You devil! What are you waiting for? Sunrise. Should be about a half hour from now. Why not just kill me now? I never wanted to kill you, Lamort. But since you did all this, I'm just gonna leave you to it. So when that sun comes up nice and bright, what little sight you got left, it's gonna burn out your eyes for sure. Come here, you donkey licking bastard. I don't need to kill you. Besides, all that gunfire, 
We'll probably draw out the local constable sometime or another. I'm sure he'll help you out. I don't need eyes to kill you. You just keep talking and I'll choke you, I swear. Where are you? Say something. Where are you? Happy trails, Lamar. And that's how they said my brother died. Eustace was never much of a man. I don't mean to say he was bad or dumb. He just didn't stand up. Or stand out. He was always in a group of some kind or another. Hunting party, trapping party, the army. Me, on the other hand, I never could cotton to the idea of joining anything. So when they told me Eustace was dead, I should have let it go. He'd lived his life and me mine for many years, but something inside me wanted blood. And sometimes, no amount of thinking will make that feeling go away. Howdy. I'm Marshal Bixby. Clementine Greer. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Got bags coming? Nope. I carry what I need. You got what I wired for? Yep. Horse, trail kit, water and rations. Best map I could find. And these. I don't see everything I asked for. Now I brought more than enough money. If it's greenbacks, I'll just be taking this away right now and thank you for your time. Coin. Gold coin. Now, show me what you did get. Well, guess we'll start with the rifles. Got your Winchester 1873 and this here 66 Yellow Boy. <laughs> that thing? It's a leftover. Still shoot straight and far. Packs a punch, too. Mm, how about the sidearms? Don't ask for much, do you? Huh. Uh, two Colt Navies, one Colt Dragoon. This here's the new gun. Got it off a fellow over at Fort Pickett. 1873 Colt single action army issue. Ain't never even been fired in anger before. Hmm. Shotgun? Well, you're damn welcome. And yes, double barreled like you asked. Did I miss anything? Nope. Take these and pack out my horse. I want to look at that map. Lady, I'm a federal marshal, not a rail hand. You've also been ordered to help me find my fugitive. Right now, that means packing out my horse while I familiarize myself with where the hell I am, because it sure ain't St. Louis. Hope you really do travel light. I do. Any word on him since my brother was killed? Not a word. Headed down the basin last we heard. You sure you come to arrest him? If I can. This tomahawk kind of says he ain't making it to the manacles. What the hell is this? Shark's rifle. Like you said, need something that shoots long and straight. Fellow said I could kill a man from half a mile away. Again, don't sound good for our prisoner. We do aim to take him prisoner, right? That's what my warrant says, just like yours. Wanted for murder, dead or alive. Okay, now I can see you've never met Judge Maxwell. He likes us to bring him in so he can watch him hang. Well, I hope we can give Judge Maxwell a good show. You ready to ride? Almost. You forgot something. I don't think so. What is it? You forgot to take that stick out of your ass. <laughs> it's a long trail. You keep treating me like I work for you and not the U.S. government, and we're going to have a very hard trip, sheriff or not. I'm a person under the badge, just like you. I just ain't real good at conversing. Well, I don't reckon there's too much to say if you're already set on killing someone. I'm not the one being disagreeable. I told you, I come to take him in. Okay, okay. Just remember, after you put about four holes in a man, they don't ride too well. I once shot a man seven times, and he still got his day in court. You shoot a lot of men, do you? Women, too. But only if I got a warrant. Remind me never to break the law in Missouri. Ain't been no real law in Missouri since the war. I reckon that's why they elected me. 
elected, eh? Like, uh, with the vote and all? Yep. Beat out old Tom Pritchard. And he was a captain in the war. I won't say which side. The vote was tied. Mighty unusual for a woman to get the nod. Settled it by drinking, shooting, wrestling. Since I'm sitting on an armory, I get the shooting part, but wrestling? No shoes. Missouri rules. Took him three out of five falls. And Townsfolk figured that was good enough. Was you raised by a bear or something? I ain't never met any woman near like you. Why? Ain't you ever seen what war will do? The war made a lot of women like me. There's widows and survivors of all them armies just moving around. These times made hard folks even harder. Ain't got nothing to do with being a woman. I hate to be in your sewing circle. You must be afraid we use bayonets instead of needles. Map says this trail goes through crow country. Yep. You know about the crow? Uh, heard about him. They won't care if you're a woman if you shoot at them. I got no reason to shoot at them. But if they want to pick a fight, well... They'll get one they won't forget. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure of that. Yeah, we got 30 miles to cover before dark. Well, you see if you can keep up then, Marshal. <laughs> yeah! Oh, can you please stop? You play that thing like your hands are made of clay. I ain't much of a hand at it, that's for sure. So why are you torturing all the critters? And me? Well, a couple reasons, actually. I'm thinking of writing a song about you. Oh, don't bother. Ain't nothing special about me. I don't know about that. You a gun-toting, wrestling, horse-racing woman sheriff. Seems like there's got to be a song in there somewhere. And the way you're caterwauling away... If someone means to do us any harm, they won't have no trouble finding us. <laughs> then what's all the guns for? I thought you might enjoy a little action. The way I figure it, better to let them know we're here and that we ain't scared to show it. That's a man's thinking for you. Guilty as charged, Sheriff. Help me, please. I can smell your fire. What the hell? Please don't stop playing. Don't say nothing more. We don't know how many of them's out there. Sounds like just one. You alone? Yes, God, yes. Oh, thank you. Please say something again. Why should we help you? I can't see. Oh, please, help me. Just one blind woman. I think we outnumbered, Sheriff. Over here. You're doing fine. Just keep walking this way. It's me. Damn it. Oh, thank God. Thank you. I got you. You're going to be all right. I've been out there so long. Thank you. Here's some water. <gasps> Your eyes. He took them. He? Mm-hmm. He caught us camp by Bidberg Lake. We was almost at Fort Campbell. It was supposed to be a short trip. We was all saying goodnight, and we just put out the fire when he just appeared. Like a ghost in the moonlight. Then he killed my paw. And my sister, Kate. What this fella look like? It was so dark, but he was so white in the moonlight. Then he started killing. I hid as best as I could. So you didn't get a good look at him? I didn't say that. Well, tell us more about him. It could be he's the same fella we're after. He found me after he killed the others. I thought he was going to kill me, too. Instead, he tied me to a wagon wheel, and then he... Take your time. I think I know what he'd done. We'll try the bastard for rape as well. He didn't rape me. He made me watch. What? Made you watch what? He said it would give him powers. He said the Indians taught him to do it. So then he took out his knife. Go on. He cut open their bodies and he, he ate them. He took their hearts, pulled them out one at a time and ate them. He ate their livers, split open their skulls with a rock so he could. Oh my God. He seemed to forget all about me. He just kept singing some Indian songs and eating and eating and eating. You don't, you don't have to go on. It's all right. There was no one left to eat, I guess. Then there was me. He came at me singing with his knife bloody. He leaned in close and asked me if I enjoyed watching him eat. That, 
Pastor. I begged him to let me go, but he told me he needed one last piece to his meal. Not your eyes. Yes. He plucked them out. <coughs> the first one, he made me watch as he ate it. Stop. Stop. Now you know why I brought all them guns. I hope they'll help. You say you're hunting him. I'd say it's more like the other way around. If you keep going. I ain't going back that trail. But you can't see. I can walk. Just point me in the right direction and warn me what kind of country I'm walking through. Nah, there's too many gullies. You'll die. Not if we take her back. Would you please? We know where he is now. Can't be too far up that trail. A few days at most. We can take her to Boiling Springs. You got a trading post up there with a the vet. They can at least fix her up and then we can get back on the trail. <laughs> Sam, don't be stupid. Be just you against him and he done gunned down 30 at one time. That we know of. 30 men, maybe. I ain't no man. A fool is what you are. Nope, I ain't that either. You take her to Boiling Springs. I'll trail along behind him and see where we might spring a trap and apprehend him. Do you know where Cooley Tail Creek is? Well, yeah. That's the boundary with Crow Territory. And according to your map, that looks like where our boy's headed. So, you meet me there in three days. You don't know this country. You can get killed just taking the wrong trail. I reckon that's true no matter what part of the world he's in, don't you? Three days. Where'd you say they killed your family? Big Bird Lake. It's right there on the map. I can read, Marshal. Didn't say you couldn't. You'll also notice that Big Bird Lake ain't anywhere near Crow Territory. So how you reckon he's heading there? Couple of reasons. He's wanted for murder in the white man's world. So running to the territory makes sense that way. And the other? He's singing engine songs. That's gotta mean something. Means he's gone plumb loco, if you ask me. See, that's how we're different. And I don't just mean man-woman different. You think he's crazy. I don't think we're that lucky. The bad ones ain't crazy. They're just evil. That's him all over. I just couldn't describe it earlier, when you asked. But now, thinking, so white and pale, blood dripping down his mouth, that's what he is. Pure evil. Doesn't sound like our boy, though, does it? Mass killer? It sounds about right for me. This may be where you and I are different. Our boy's a shooter. This one fancies the knife. Seems different. Maybe. If there's two of them, that'll be tougher. I'll keep both eyes out. Hmm. Sorry, Blanche. You get it down the trail tonight. We got a half-decent moon, and the quicker you're off, the butte, the better. Can't argue with that. Remember, Marshal, Cooley Tail Creek, three days. I don't want to be out here alone longer than I need to. I ain't arguing that. One thing, though. How come is it you riding ahead and I'm escorting the lady home? You didn't correct me, I notice. No. Good. Then I would really have to get on Pleasant. See you in three days. Yeah! She gonna be okay? I reckon. She ain't got much of a Pleasant side. Anyone inside? Oh, it's freezing out here. Please, mister. My... My horse died, and I've been walking through the snow ever since. Would you at least let me share the fire? Oh, thank you, mister. Oh, you get warm, little lady. I'll get you some coffee. You been out there long? Long enough to almost freeze. Thanks for letting me in. I can't leave a woman outdoors on a night like this. It wouldn't be fitting. Thanks, mister. I appreciate the coffee, too. I understand. This storm's a mean one. It's been blowing a while now. Have a seat. Yes, sir. Like I said, my horse, he just... just couldn't take it. So I had to hoof it. So you said. You, uh... you live here, mister? Funny thing about people. They forget the little things. You mean living alone? No. I mean when they're lying. You ain't been out in the storm an hour on foot. 
And I expect your horse is just fine over there on the ridge somewhere. LUKE. Put that down, mister. I don't mean you no harm. REVENUE. And if you'd been out there, your boots would be soaked and your coat caked in snow. Hell, your hair isn't even frozen. So you just enjoy your coffee and set in your chair while you tell me what you're really here for. LUKE. Smart one, ain't you? Well, good for you. You know what I'm here for. I'm here for you. REVENUE. I figured that. What do you want me for? That's what I want to know. LUKE. I don't want you for nothin'. The law wants you for murder, among other things. REVENUE. Ah, that. The law. Would you believe there are things to which the law doesn't apply? Constable, deputy, what? LUKE. Sheriff. Polk County, Missouri. REVENUE. I can't remember ever being in Polk County, and I make it a point to never go to Missouri. LUKE. But you killed a man from Polk County, and that's what I aim to see you swing for. REVENUE. Ah, now I get the picture. You're the lone lawman, well, law person, come to see justice done. If I choose not to accompany you to my hanging, and I think you can assume I won't, what would you do? LUKE. Well, mister, you and me got a problem. You might have guessed I didn't come here just to talk and drink coffee. Reckon there might be blood spilled. Warrant says dead or alive. REVENUE. See, that probably won't end well for you. Law being on your side don't matter. You know who I am. You know what I do. Sometimes innocent people get killed. That ain't on me if they shoot first. So, Sheriff, if I don't shoot first, how is it murder? LUKE. You can tell that to the judge. REVENUE. Ow! Stop! I burns! Hot coffee! Damn you! Ow! You move it all and I'll cut your throat. LUKE. Stop! Please! REVENUE. That's more like it. Some bad man you are. LUKE. Can you please move the knife off my throat? I don't like knives. REVENUE. Oh, the big bad gunman doesn't like knives. Shut your mouth and give me your hands. LUKE. Ouch! Not so tight! REVENUE. Well, it ain't supposed to feel good. I got to say, I'm disappointed. LUKE. I must say I'm surprised. REVENUE. Now, let's do this nice and formal like. <clears throat> Junius Weatherspoon, I arrest you for the murder of Eustace Greer. I know you won't believe me, but it wasn't me. I'm not guilty. Yeah, right. That is right. I told you you wouldn't believe me. No one ever does. Is that why you kill him? I don't kill anyone. Well, not really. Look, mister. I ain't yet met a murderer that wasn't innocent somehow. Yes, technically I killed them, but it's not like that. My hand was forced. Force hockey. Forced by who? <laughs> Me. I killed them. At least if you hear him tell it. Ah, 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 ah. Everybody just stay put. I was listening outside to y'all's little chat. Well, how interesting. Who the hell are you? Our uh, name's Lamort, but I'm so much more than a name now, and I came to thank him properly for that. Keep that away from me. Not a chance, old friend. You and this knife have had a date long overdue. Give me your guns, Sheriff. You're gonna have to take them from me, and that ain't gonna be no easy thing. Sheriff, don't! Oh, come on. Let her go. It might be interesting, an amusing moment before you and I have our fun. Oh, I don't suppose he told you about me, did he? No, of course not. Why would he? Why do I care? <sighs> well, call it fair warning. You see, he and I go back a long way. Before the war, he was a sutler. Selling the army what it needed to fight the engines as we moved west. Oh, he got rich, too. But then the war came, and he got richer. Fascinating. 
I see the thing about selling guns is you're kind of responsible for what people do with them. At least that's how most folks see it. Shut up, Lamort. Oh, my, my, my. Ain't you full of piss and vinegar all of a sudden? That's strange, considering you trussed up like a Christmas goose. Don't interrupt me again, or this little lady won't get to hear our story. And considering it's the last thing she'll ever hear, I think we owe her that. Keep up with that big talk. You don't scare me. I am not trying to scare you. So here's poor little Junius. Well, not poor, not at all. Rich now and wanting to get richer. And this fella comes in with a request. Name of Quantrill, Bill Quantrill. Maybe you heard of him? If you was listening, you know I'm from Missouri. So that's a dumb question. <laughs> Quite. Well, old Billy boy is planning on taking Kansas out of the war his own self. Oh, sure, he got some boys to ride with him, but with just that little bunch of boys, he burned Lawrence, Kansas to the ground. Now, how do you think he'd done that? Why, with Junius's help, of course. He was evil, not me. Oh, maybe so. But Billy needed some special guns, and good old Junius here got them for him. And after that, and everything in between, they are going to be mine now. He's my prisoner. And you are my prisoner. Die, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll take a lot more than that, little lady. Oh, sure, that hurt a bit. But, mm, let me just eat a little bit of you, and I'll be right as rain. What the hell? Stay away! Mort, it's between you and me. Always has been. Come take me. Oh, you're next. But first, I feel like some lady fingers. Try buckshot instead, you donkey-licking bastard. Bixby? Ain't General Custer. Get him untied. Yes, untie me before he comes to. I just blasted Happy's head off with a double barrel shotgun. He ain't coming to. Oh, trust me, it ain't enough. Now hurry up and untie me. Look, you can just stop that noise right now. You may be a killer, but you ain't much of a storyteller. Come on, Clem, let's get him out of here. Judge Maxwell got a cell and a rope just waiting for him. <laughs> What the hell? Hate to say I told you so. Move. We can talk about it on horseback. Run! Okay, what the hell? He's Wendigo now. He'll be hard to kill. What are you saying? The Indian legend. I guess it's true. What the hell is a Wendigo? A uh, Wendigo. A flesh eater. Uh, a man who eats other men to gain their strength. I ain't running from a cannibal or a kid's fairy tale. It's not a fairy tale. Lamort always believed it, even in Kansas. Hand over them pistols, mister. You seem like you'd be a nice enough fella as a prisoner. Don't make me shoot you. God, no! Please, don't point that away from me. Some gunfighter. Weren't you listening? I'm no gunfighter. I'm a merchant. It's those damn guns. Hand them over, and then you can tell me all about it going down the trail. For God's sake, don't shoot me. We got company coming back to seconds. And he'll eat all three of us before I lower my gun. Now hand over them pistols. <sighs> Fine. But pick up the belt. Don't touch the pistols. Oh, you will be sorry. Why? Kill us with no guns? Them pistols is haunted. Well, more like, uh, cursed. Right. Mount up. Think you can outrun a horse? I don't honestly know. What the hell are you talking about? When he feeds, he gains powers. I don't know what he can do. And that's why I've been running from him for so long. Can he change the weather? Let's not wait long enough to find out. Move out! Look out! The mort! Fix me! Look out! 
He's done for. Run! There's a railroad track just through this wood. We can hide in the shack. Uh, hiding's no good. Give me back my pistols. Ain't gonna happen. Now shut up and run. We can't stay here. He'll track us and then we'll end up just like that marshal. We have to get out of here. Where do you suggest we go, huh? I was making my way up to the Indian territory. What good would that do? A lot more than that Sharp's carbine. You might be able to shoot all day, but it ain't gonna stop him. Bixby said he blew half his head off. I got a quarter mile clean shot and a gap in the clouds with a full moon. Maybe I can blow off the other half. Yeah, and then he'll just grow another one. We'll see. If you got magic pistols, why are you running from him? Because they won't kill him. I tried just about everything, and I ain't found nothing that'll kill that thing yet. Come on. Everything dies somehow. Yes, it does. And that's what feeds it. A medicine man told us both that the Wendigo feeds on death and is reborn. So I can't kill it, and neither can you. Got him. Danny goes. <laughs> oh, I like a girl that likes it rough. Do that again. And up he gets. <laughs> oh, I see you. Run. Let's catch our breath. We haven't lost him. This ridge is, is all stone. He won't be able to track us up it. And then we can head into the Crow territory, like you said. He can smell us. Over a rock? In a rainstorm? I wouldn't put it past him. Can I have my pistols back now? You ain't gonna shoot me? I don't shoot anyone. I never had any stomach for killing. Quantrell had these guns cast special. I went to that evil place that he had the guns made and brought them to him. Brand new in the box. I didn't know about the curse, but Quantrell, he sure did. What's the curse? Whoever holds the pistols, they will kill anyone that fires a shot at them in anger. That's a dumb curse. I didn't curse them. I'm just telling you what they do. So what? And how does that help? It doesn't unless I can goad him into shooting at me. Then the guns will kill everyone around me holding a gun. You can see how that would be helpful in a war. No. Uh, wouldn't you kill all your own men too? I don't think Quantrell cared. He knew more about it. Well, how'd you end up with them? His widow brought them back to me when he was killed. She wanted to sell them. Brought them in with his holsters. I pulled them out, and that was that. So you don't want to be a gunfighter? Hell no! No! I'm just a guy. A regular guy. Under evil. And these guns, can they kill that Wendigo? I don't think so, but... Just like yours, they sure can hurt him a lot. Great. Get moving. The crow ain't gonna like us bringing this mess into their house, but maybe they have an idea. It's their monster. That's what I was thinking. Now get running. I reckon 
This is Crow Country here. Hey! Hey! No guns! Friends! Hope they speak the English. Danger! Help us! Oh, that almost took my ear off. I think that means no. Oh, you're tired yet. I'm not. Oh, I am getting hungry, though. Oh, what do we do? Why do you keep asking me? This was your plan. We can't fight him if we can't kill him. Even I run out of ammo. Y'all sure are making me work up quite an appetite. Uh, shame we don't speak crow. Maybe we don't have to. Hey! Wendigo! Danger! Wendigo! He's coming! Down there! Wendigo! Oh, God! He's gotten bigger! And uglier. We better run. But they'll fill us full of arrows if we keep going. We just have to run and hope they understand. Now run! Jesus, he just grew wings. Hell! Run, you idiot! They don't understand! Oh, I'll be damned. I guess they did understand. Maybe. Or maybe they just shot the monster that just grew wings in front of them. Either way, they don't care about us. Run! No more hill to run up. This is the top. Normally, we could make a stand here, but... Yeah. Look around. I ain't ready to just lay down and die. Oh, look around you. It's an Indian graveyard. Seems like a good place. Don't seem right, just leaving folks above ground like that. Sky burial is normal here. I guess we're gonna get one. Sky burial? Is that what it's called? That gives me an idea. <laughs> oh, no place left to run, my little appetizer. It better be a good one. It's the only one I got. Down the ravine. Aim for the railroad boulder cage. Oh, that's a hundred foot drop. I hate heights. <sighs> At last. Dinner time. You hate getting eaten? Go! This is pointless. I, I can fly, you know. Come here. You stay here by this pin. I'll go to the other one, and maybe we can release the rocks onto him, bury the son of a... Try to cover me. I'll try. Good luck. Think it'll work? He'll see it coming. Not if I'm right. Shoot straight, for God's sake. Oh. Uh. I'm okay. I'm okay. Keep going. I'm there. Let me loosen the pin, then you do yours. Ah! No! He just got a chunk of me. <laughs> a big chunk. He got my hand. I can't cover you with my left hand. No choice. Aim for the big spots. your pistols. No! I can't give you the curse. Better curse than dead. Give him here and pull that pin. What are you doing? Shooting a miss? Yes, now shut up! That's it. He dodged the rocks. Keep shooting. Drive him into the cage. Sky burial. Here. I can't shoot worth a damn, but I can reload. Last ones. Make them count. Tell your guns that. Look out! The cage is giving way! We got him! He's down! 
Give it a minute. Let's be sure. Telling the truth. Ah, God, I hope so. Trapped in the steel like that, he ain't going nowhere. That's for sure. And there's no food for him up there. Let's hope we damaged him enough. Please, please. Won't, won't somebody help? Mercy. Please. I guess they do speak English. Junius! Ah. Yeah. Got so worked up. Forgot about my hand. I'm done for. <coughs> hey. I am sorry about the curse. You might try Alaska. <coughs> Good luck, Clementine. I mean, uh... Sheriff. Goodbye, Junius. Engines. Though that shot was fired at me right then, there was two things about it. One, it wasn't fired in anger. And two, that curse Junius believed so strong in never came true. Maybe it just didn't apply to women. I still think it was a bunch of hokum. And that was three years ago. Since the doctors told me I didn't have long, I wrote all this down so that you would know that your aunt wasn't just a crazy woman. After all I've been through, I think Bixby might have been right. There's a song in there somewhere. Maybe you can write it. I bequeath these pistols to you as they still have great value both in money and in sentiment. And forgive a dying woman one last piece of advice. Don't allow that Mr. McCarty to court you. While Bonnie McCarty is perfectly normal, Bonnie Bonnie just sounds ridiculous. And sweet as young William is, you just can't trust a man that changes his name. Your loving aunt, Clementine Greer. Rogue. The role of Rogue was played by David Robinson. Clem played by Haley Guillot. Lemort, played by Scott D. Ford. The Blind Girl, played by Amber Hamilton. Written, produced, and created by Scott D. Ford. Directed by Christy Leake and Scott D. Ford. Edited by Scott D. Ford and Christy Leake. Sound engineer, Chuck Dickin. The Dark Lands is a work of fiction all characters, persons, and situations are intended for entertainment purposes. Any similarity to persons living or dead is entirely accidental. The Darklands is a cooperative venture between WFWM 91.9 and Misfit Toys Industries. It is protected under U.S. and international copyright. The Darklands is a wholly owned property of Misfit Toys Industries. Any reproduction, distribution, or rebroadcast of this program in part or whole without the express written consent of Misfit Toys Industries and the Darklands LLC is strictly prohibited. The producers would like to sincerely thank WFWM 91.9 and Frostburg State University for their generous cooperation in the production of this program. Thank you for listening. <laughs>